Hi everyone, welcome back to Paw Paw's Workshop. So you decided to buy that laser, and it doesn't matter what brand it is, but you decided to be able to engrave on wood, such as some of the examples that I have behind me here, or you're doing Christmas gifts or Christmas ornaments, or if you moved into ceramic, doing something along this line, or glass. All of those things are fantastic to be able to do with the laser. Now, after a period of time, it was time to be able to make some projects that was three-dimensional and take a bunch of wood and cut out the projects. Well, that means cutting all the way through the material. And when you do that, you need to have a honeycomb. When I first started and made my first projects, there was no honeycomb in my shop. So I did something a little bit different. I went into the wife's kitchen and raided that kitchen and I found a cooling sheet for the cookies. It's just nothing more than a cooling rack for all your cookies. And I got it. Now, I had to get her a couple of other ones, but I got this one. And the other thing that you need to be able to have underneath this cookie sheet is a little piece of metal. Now, it doesn't really matter what it is. This could be aluminum sheet. It could be uh, sheet metal. In this case, this is just an inexpensive piece of sheet metal that I had picked up at one of the big box stores. And that's all it is. But it's very important to be able to have that. And you might ask, well, why is it important? I wanna show you that too. This is a real good example on my workbench where that honeycomb and that metal sheet just wasn't enough. And I end up cutting right into my workbench itself. And you really don't want that to happen. But quite frankly, it's happened more than once. Now here's another example over here, and I'm sure if looking at this workbench, I can find more places where those kinds of accidents have taken place. And this was my first setup. Had the cookie cooling rack down, and it was sitting right on top of that piece of sheet metal, and that worked real well. And you can see with all the scorch marks there that I've used this for quite a bit, and it did work fairly well. But the problem was, the little parts and things would fall through this and sometimes it would get in way and guess what? Those little scraps of wood didn't fall all the way and it caught the laser head and it created a problem and it messed up the project. So although this was a good starting point, it certainly is not the best option. My first real honeycomb was this one right here. It was small. It did have the metal sheet that was with it. And that went down just like that. And this is small. This is overall about eight inches by uh, almost 12 inches. You also see the scale along here that shows that's 250 millimeters by about 150 millimeters. Now this works great if you're engraving small items such as that and you're doing just one item at a time, or perhaps two, you could slide that over and get a second one on there. And that worked real well. But I found that I quickly outgrew this small one. Now the next honeycomb that I got was actually by Diwali. And this one I have used an awful lot, and this worked real well in most of the situations. Now it has these little corner, um, plastic corners that, and I actually keep those. I don't throw those away because what I do on the back is I keep the aluminum sheet right there. And I just use the plastic corner to help hold it on. Now this is 400 millimeters by the 400 millimeters. And like I said, this one worked real well in majority of the situations. But here again, as time went along, my projects kit kept getting larger and that's what caused this spot right over here because I engraved or I actually cut I cut right off my uh, honeycomb and went into my workbench so after outgrowing this one what's the next step now quite frankly this one would probably work for the majority of you out there and do a very good long life with this honeycomb and do the vast majority of your projects. But in my shop, my projects have a tendency to keep getting bigger and bigger. And with that thought in mind, it's time to move to a larger honeycomb. And this is the latest honeycomb that I have just received. And I'm gonna start using this one on the different projects. 
Now this honeycomb is almost 600 by 600 on the millimeters. And if you measure that out for those that still use the inches, it's just under the two feet by two feet. Now this comes with the aluminum sheet, but they took it one step further. They rounded this edge, so this honeycomb actually drops right into the tray, if you will, and I like that because it doesn't slide around. So I keep these corners, but quite frankly, these corners can go away and just have the honeycomb sit into the tray itself. Very nice feature. So you really don't need these corner brackets anymore, so these could be discarded. The nice thing about the size like this, you can put the whole laser right on top of this. So I can take this Sculpin S9 laser and sit it right down here. And now that entire bed is covered and I'm not gonna run the risk of cutting into my workbench again. And that's a big advantage. Now, from what the manufacturer says, this Congro honeycomb is actually the largest on the market. Now, I haven't done the research, so you guys tell me. Leave me a comment down below. If you find one larger than this, let me know. But from right now, I believe, according to the manufacturer, this is the largest honeycomb that's actually on the market. And that is, again, just right at the 600 millimeters by 600 millimeters, or just under 2 feet by 2 feet. So there you have a quick evolution of what happened in my shop to go from a cookie cooling sheet all the way up to a large uh, honeycomb. Now, what will be the best in your shop? It really depends on the type of project that you're working on. If you're doing small items, then you know what? That small honeycomb will work just fine. But if you're gonna be doing larger projects or even thinking about doing the larger projects, go ahead and consider getting that Comgro uh, honeycomb so that it will take care of those lasers sitting right on top and you're not gonna be engraving all the way through onto the workbench. Now, from what I've heard in the comments, a few of you are actually engraving on the dining room table. Now, if you make a mistake there, I think the wife's gonna be just a little bit upset with you. So it might be a good idea to get the largest honeycomb that you can that will cover the whole entire laser bed so you're not going to have that accident. Now, if you like this very short video, by all means, go ahead, give me that thumbs up, and don't forget, just hit that little subscribe button down below, and I'd appreciate it. Now, currently right now, I'm working on a number of different videos. You're not going to want to miss out. I can't get them done fast enough for my own satisfaction, but I'm working on it every single day. So please, Go ahead and subscribe and check back often so that you'll see exactly what's happening in my shop. For now, bye-bye. I look forward to seeing you real soon.